So first, Rod, why don't you break down what we have going on with the solar panels, particularly how they're producing energy to allow us to pump water. Okay, what we have here today is on this system, we have 280 watt solar panels that converts the, the sun to DC direct current, which uh, in turn will run the solar pump and produce water, uh, pump the water, I should say, to the stock tank here. So we, we get the electricity from the sun. Is it any different from here over from a standard stock watering system? Well, no, this, uh, this system here, and that is just like having just a regular stock water system, run off electricity, off of uh, AC current. Uh, like I say, we're just doing it by the sun here. This system is set up with an IO101 controller, so you can plug it into a 115 volt generator. What do you do? I know the sun doesn't always shine, so how do you store energy with these? Are there batteries on this thing? This system is not set up with batteries. Uh, you can set these systems up with batteries to pump through the night if you need to. But is it also uh, an option if you wanted to store water? You could just simply put in a bigger tank and then not have a need for batteries? Yes, you could. Now, Rod, if we're talking about system design, um, What's a good system going to have? Now, of course, I want folks to know out there that when these are creating electricity, it's not play electricity. This is real electricity, and you can really hurt yourself with it. Well, the aspects of a good system milt would be to have good solar panels. Well, these panels should last up to uh, 25 years, and a good setup with your controller in it there that you can run on uh, generator. You do want to have a proper base. We use a six-inch steel pipe. Here, and uh, we have a, a pipe welded on the bottom and cemented in, so there's no way the wind can turn any of this system uh, around or anything like that. You, you do want to make sure that you have a substantial rack holder in that to hold these systems. So, like I say, they don't budge. You know, the wind doesn't tear them up. Uh, critters get in. If they happen to get through, you know, they're not going to really tear it off of there. Okay. So it's very important if you're going to spend the money on the panels, you want to make sure they stay where you want them. And then you want to make sure that once you have all your electricity and everything hooked up, your, your panel arrays uh, wired together, that you put everything into conduit and then make sure you get your float set up and everything set up right to where you know, you're not wasting this water. When it gets up to the overflow, it shuts everything off. Why don't you talk about how you have them positioned? When I set stuff up in it there, I set these at a 3% slope. These are set up just for summertime use. This can be positioned for wintertime use, but on this summertime use, Annette, the way it is set up right now with our sun, mainly in through the summer, being in the northern hemisphere, it allows this solar system right here in this area to kick on at 6.30 in the morning and, it, and as long as the sun's shining and uh, we don't have heavy cloud cover in the evening, it'll run clear up to 8.30 at night. Okay. Now if, so this is set up for summer use, so if it was set up for winter use, what would it look like? Well, if uh, we was going to set this up for winter use, we would uh, undo a couple bolts there and then we could adjust this to 35 to 60 percent slope that we needed for the southern hemisphere sun in the winter. Okay, so this is one case where it's uh, different than uh, how people would uh, generally install solar panels on their home, where you hear the rule of thumb that, okay, we're going to put it at, slope that about our latitude, so here at 41, 42 degrees. But sure. Here, since you know you want the water in the summer and you're worried about things like wind loading, you want to make sure these are good and secure, you, you pick a flatter angle. You bet. Talk about how important shading is. Like, if I get on this panel right now and shade it, how much is that going to impact production? Sure, it, it'll impact production a lot. You want to have these set up in that to where you're not going to pick up any shade throughout any part of the day if you can. The more sun they, they receive, the more water you'll produce. Okay, so it's very important since we're creating electrons and if we had that shaded area, the electrons would just flow to the unenergized part. So that's that shading correct. is very important. So that's something to think about if you're putting in next to an old windmill or that's correct. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have some, uh, some trees growing next near your- uh, Wind breaks. Wind breaks certainly in fencing. So shading is very important. All right, Rod, I want to thank you for your time. It's been a great overview of the technical aspects of a solar-powered livestock watering system, and I appreciate your expertise. You're more than welcome. Thank you very much.